Let's play video games! Hello and welcome to Rude Joystick Gaming. Um, now typically, uh, if you watch my videos, I kind of stick to one platform when it comes to any kind of games. And it's usually any games that can run on Linux. Uh, now, as you can see, I'm running The Sims 3, and yes, it is on Linux. Uh, lucky, luckily, uh, The Sims 3 had pretty good rating when it came to uh, the Wine application. Now, for those who don't know, there's a lot of games that are incompatible with Linux, as well as many applications that were designed for Windows specifically. Uh, Wine is like a compatibility layer that kind of fools applications into thinking that they are being installed and run on Windows. Uh, and it provides a lot of the libraries that these applications or games need. So one thing that, of course, everyone who knows about Wine will say is that Wine is not an emulator, which is absolutely true. Uh, but here we go. We've got The Sims 3 running on Wine. Uh, it took a little bit of time for me to get the proper setup for this, but ultimately it works pretty well. Now. Those who are fans of The Sims will know that The Sims 3 is notoriously bad when it comes to performance. Um, the Sims 3 seems to have a lot of performance issues, memory leaks, and overall it's just very unoptimized. Uh, which, The Sims 2 was much better in that respect, although I guess the graphics weren't quite as polished they were still pretty good uh, from, com well, compared to The Sims 1. So, here we go. We got The Sims 3. Uh, let's create a household. Now, I've done a little bit of testing with everything, and so far, everything seems to work. Um, now, another thing to make note of is that The Sims games are 32-bit applications. So typically people are going to be running, I mean, well nowadays people are going to be running these on 64-bit operating systems, which allows The Sims to use all 4 gigabytes that it can possibly muster, um, as long as the system has that available, plus extra for the system itself. Uh, now, be, from The Sims 1 all the way up to The Sims 4, even The Sims 4 is not a 64 app 64 bit application they are all 32 bit which means they're limited to using just 32 uh, gigabytes of memory um, now a lot of people had trouble running the sims 3 in uh, 64 bit mode for wine I personally actually found it to run much better than using uh, the 32 bit prefix for wine so it runs in 64-bit mode, which should allow it to use all 4 gigabytes of memory. I've not seen it actually uh, utilize all 4 gigs ever. It usually crashes before that point uh, because the performance is, as I said, garbage. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty much everything works. Uh, I've even installed a few uh, expansion packs. I think I've got Late Night... Uh, Pets, Seasons, Generations, I think that's about it. But everything seems to work. Uh, I've not noticed any issues as of yet. Um, as far as anything else, like I've even tried uh, adding uh, you know, community mods to it, and those seem to work fine as well. Uh, some of which are quite naughty, um, but whatever. So, let's see, I guess there's really not too much that I'll have to uh, demonstrate here. Uh, hairstyles can be set per individual, yep, we know that. So yeah, I'll go through a little bit of uh, character customization and I'll cut there and come back once I've got 
a household set up, and see you then. And we're back. So I made somewhat of like a Russian family, or what I would think a Russian family is, since I don't really know. Uh, we got the old grandmother, Babushka Nomakov. We have her husband, Ivan Nomakov. And they have two children, Pietro and Valeria. If I even pronounce that correctly. So, that took me a little bit of time to actually make all those sims. But, uh, whatever. Now, I'm not... I don't really intend to do like a full series on this because it's The Sims. Once you've played The Sims once, you've pretty much played it for, you know, you've pretty much experienced everything already. Um, unless you decide to go in, add in a whole bunch of mods, and really randomize the experience. Um, so choose a place to live. Now choose a lot in the town where you'd like to move in this household. Okay. Um, where should we move in? There are some empty houses. Uh, we got monotone, shotgun style, pre-fabulous, Mosquito Cove. So our sims have um, 22,500 simoleons to start out with. So I can almost go just about anywhere. In fact, it looks like I'm just under enough to get Mosquito Cove. What a weird fucking name. Um, Prefabulous? The Monotone? Uh, let's go shotgun style. Oh wait, there's one down here. Myrtle Bungalow. I don't know about that. Let's go with shotgun style. My audio is a little bit too loud. Uh, purchase a lot. So, let's see. 58 Water Lily Lane. So we can get it unfurnished for about almost 13,000, or we can get it furnished for a little bit over 16,000. Let's get it furnished. Why not? Great. So now, uh, you can continue browsing households in town or start playing right now. Alright, well let's get down to brass tacks. And one thing I forgot to mention is uh, in playing this through Wine on Linux, uh, there seems to be a little bit of an issue where it sets your monitor's gamma setting to a ridiculous value. So if you were to see the rest of my screen aside from this application, um, everything looks really washed out. It looks like it's been bleached uh, just because of the gamma settings. So there is a way to fix that and it's rather simple but it's it's still kind of a nuisance and I found that really it's kind of necessary in order to even play the play the game very well. Um, so alright I don't need you to walk me through the tutorial. So as we can see um, Pietro, he's a strapping young lad. Uh, his father doesn't look too much like him, but, you know, gray hair will do that to you. Uh, Pietro, of course, doesn't care too much about his outward appearance. That's why he's got a bit of a five o'clock shadow. He's got, you know, patched up jeans. Uh, we got Babushka. Um, you know, she looks like a, well, aside from the stupid hat that I put on her, she looks like the uh, atypical uh, country Russian grandmother. Uh, she's put on quite a few pounds. Uh, I think I set her traits to being like very good with like gardening and 
and housework and stuff like that. Uh, Pietro's sister, um, Valeria, she lo she's a little bit more of a trendsetter. Uh, she tries to be a little bit more stylish. Uh, shit, I switched workspace. Hopefully that didn't fuck up my capture. And uh, here we go. Got their little house. Pretty, pretty modest. You know, they move out of Russia. They want to get away from the... Uh, from the country life and move into the hustle and bustle of city life now that they've come into the acquisition of a modest sum of money and they're going to live out their lives in moderate comfort with this modest amount of money uh, Pietro and his sister will have to pick up the slack while uh, granny and grandpa decide to I can't really call them Granny and Grandpa, they just look very old. While their parents decide to, you know, be couch potatoes and, you know, eventually let the housework go to wreck and ruin. But there we go. This is basically just, this video is basically just to show that, you know, The Sims works, uh, the expansion packs work and everything. Um, the performance is not great. I mean, I can't imagine that it's any better running on native Windows, and I have heard that no, it isn't, <laughs> uh, because of the uh, memory leaks that it has that cause constant crashes. Um, crashes do occur typically on Wine, but for The Sims 3, it's it's it, it's playable, but you do have to save quite often, and uh, what. Few things that you know, I I thought I had played The Sims 3 years ago, but maybe I didn't. I thought you know there wasn't as much social media integration as what there is, and there does seem to be a lot of social media integration. It's like ridiculous. Like if I open up the options menu here, uh, you can see the screen size. That's not actually what the screen size is because it's running in a smaller window um, let's see we got general settings so we've got us usage sharing which uh, help EA improve products services user experience this is basically telemetry in the Sims 3 so it it just kind of like gathers information I'm guessing any crash logs or or bug reports or anything. I can't imagine that there's very good bug detection because they've never fixed half the problems with the game. Um, but mostly like stati statistics, settings, feature preferences, uh, and in incident um, or event data. So they say the information will not be shared with any third party, which I honestly don't believe whenever anyone says that. Uh, we've got a few other things like um, online. So you can log in to take advantage of online game features such as a store exchanger, player wall, sim port, and achievements. I don't know why you would want this in the game, honestly. I don't know why you'd like have to be logged in. Uh, so you can enter like Facebook credentials or Twitter credentials and it'll like, I don't know, it'll send fucking updates to your social networks that nobody wants to read, honestly. Because, let's face it, if you're playing The Sims 3, you're not doing it to try and impress anybody, <laughs> honestly. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's it's stupid. They've got, you know, they say they got privacy policies and privacy settings, but it's ridiculous. Yeah, just log in before activating that. So there you go. That's that's pretty much all that there is to it. Uh, the Sims works. Performance not good, but then again, I guess The Sims 4 uh, only has moderate performance improvements. And you know, Sims 4, I honestly would not recommend getting just for the fact that they cut out content from the base game to later sell back to you as DLC or expansion packs, which I always found the idea of expansion packs for The Sims 3 to be a little bit ridiculous, because a lot of it's just cosmetic stuff, honestly. You know, you got fucking item packs, like, it's for bathrooms and bedrooms, and it's like, this is 
pointless. <laughs> pretty much all the, pretty much the majority of expansion packs, you could get similar stuff from community mods. It's they should they shouldn't be charging that much for that. And I think somebody went and compiled a price of how much all the DLC and expansion packs would cost. And it's something like over a hundred dollars for all expansion packs. That's just ridiculous. I don't know how EA gets away with that. But there you go. If if you want to be a Linux user and you want to play The Sims 3 for some unfathomable reason, there you, it works. Um, you can install any expansion packs. They'll work with it. Uh, community content will work with it. Uh, a few things that don't seem to work. The launcher with the store integration that doesn't seem to work but i wouldn't want that to begin with um so it doesn't really affect me uh i've only been playing this for a little a little while like within the past week or so and i figure i may as well uh, do a video about it because you know why not i haven't done many other videos recently so there you go there you have it uh that's pretty much all there is for this video so if you like it no uh, you know Give a like or whatever. Leave a comment. If you want to see more of it, for whatever reason, leave a comment. Um, or don't. I don't really care. <laughs> it's The Sims 3. I couldn't care either way. Uh, but there you go. So until next time, take care, Internet. I will see you in space.